Hey everybody, Josh Zeering, co-founder and chief pilot of KittyHawk.io here at Falcon Field in Arizona with Ron Beyer, helicopter instructor extraordinaire, who is um, probably unadvisably going to let me fly the Sakari SVH-4. It is a helicopter training platform. I don't know if you can see it behind us here, but it is actually uh, on a platform. You can't actually take it off, but that probably won't help me that much. So, Ron, let me ask you a question. Yep. How do you think I'm going to do here? You've taught hundreds of people how to fly, and I have zero hours experience. So, I, I, I think you're going to do fine. It's, it's Flying a helicopter is all about patience and taking your time. So, we're going to break it down into small, simple parts, and by the, by the end of the day, I'm going to have you hovering, I'm going to have you doing pedal turns, and if you're, if you're capable and able, we'll have you, uh, that was a little dig, yeah. we'll have you taxiing this aircraft around on our lot here. I think, I think you're going to be fine. Well, this is Dave, you're letting the, the fixed wing guy and the drone guy fly something yep. rotary, so this is yep. going to be really exciting. So we're, we're going to, and, and if, we do, if I do my job right, we're going to take you to the dark side, and you're never going to want to fly that stuff again. You're only going to want to fly helicopters. Can't wait, look out. All right. So we've done a couple of the basics with the Sakari SBH-4. Uh, we've done some of the basic moving of power management, of a little bit of up and down, landing and taking off, and some pedal turns. So uh, we're getting ready to do it on its least pressurized system. So it's pretty much gonna be all Josh here moving forward. Let's see how he does. Rather than subject you to the crazy, loud, and annoying helicopter noise, I figured I'd kind of narrate some of the things that I was working on here. So this was kind of the first part of the training where you're really just trying to make sure that you have the ability to maintain your altitude and your heading. And while that sounds really easy, uh, it's actually surprisingly difficult. Every time you adjust the pitch, the aircraft actually changes heading, and so your feet need to get busy. Uh, we were doing four-point turns. So what we would do is every 90 degrees stop the aircraft and every 90 degrees go again. And so this was a great way to kind of get a sense of how do you control the tail and if it's, you'll notice Ron's actually walking around with me. So having good tail control is uh, super important otherwise it could potentially be a bad time. Really enjoyed this and this was kind of a good way to start without getting too crazy and in the weeds all at once. And then obviously making sure you get the money landing is the key to any good flight. So Josh did pretty well. He uh, he was at the least least setting right now, but one thing he has right now is the deck is still attached to the ground. So we've gone through some of the basic training on it so far. Now we're going to shut down. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back. Recognize this is not a simulator. It is a flight training device. So the helicopter, as you can see, is moving. It's suspended by the by the the uh, the fixture that it's that it's set up in. But it is flying, it is torquing, it is twisting, it is doing everything that a basic helicopter pilot would learn. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shut it down, we're going to take a quick break, then I'm going to release the deck. Now we're going to go through that process again of moving the aircraft this time, so we're going to get a little taxi action. So we're going to be, it's safe because it's, a, it's a set up in that bracket system, so it's not going to let you get out of control. And that's the idea of the trainer, to learn these basic skills so once you move into the big helicopter, it's an easier transition. We'll see you in a few minutes. Perfect. Hey, so just spent 20 minutes in the SVH-4, and number one, I think I love rotary aircraft now. But <laughs> I told you. Ron, I, you're bringing me to the dark side, but yeah. number two, it was surprising at how much control authority it had for such little inputs. It was really interesting to say, wow, I'm going to move the stick. I'm going to think of moving the stick to the left and just move to the left so extreme. It was awesome. So I'm super psyched. Good. This is going to be fun. What are we going to do next, Ron? What we're going to do next is we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to, I'm going to recharge the system. We're going to release the base. So now the aircraft will be movable. Movable, is that a word? Movable. Mobile. Word. Mobile. <laughs> so as now, right now it's attached to the deck, so we contained the amount of movement that the aircraft could have. So now what we're going to do is we're going to release the deck, recharge it up a little bit so that it, the, the flight controls are a little more tense because once it starts moving, it's, it's real intense. So we're going to gradually get him to the point where we are right now on the tension of the controls to where he's moving the aircraft all by himself with the least amount of tension and he's basically flying. Then once we get done, we're going to go fly the real thing. We're going to go out and do a quick flight and then come back and talk about that. Oh boy. So, having completed the ability to just kind of understand the controls, Ron has, in his infinite wisdom, re removed the ability to remain in one place. So now this thing, this party's on the roll. 
So we're gonna see what happens now. Okay, so as you can see, Josh is in the aircraft, we're ready to go. So we're gonna have, uh, what he's gonna do now, the deck is loose, so the aircraft will move. We're gonna start working on that transition of a free aircraft moving around, and we'll see how he does. So this is probably about 40 minutes after I started working with the Sakari, and I, I have to say it was pretty impressive to be able to move this thing around. And you know, there was some initial trepidation with the idea that the base moves and it kind of freaks you out because it moves like one of those weird 1980s R2-D2 style robots where it's not necessarily moving in a linear fashion. But if you stop looking at the thing, it makes a big difference. And as you're kind of moving around, you have the ability to get a sense of how the helicopter's performing. Now, the one thing that did trip me up a little bit, though, is that there were cracks in the tarmac. And so you'll see, it, like right now, ex exactly, um, you kind of get stuck in this crack, and you need to give it a lot of control to get out of the crack. Um, and that initially gave me some, some headache because I was worried about moving the stick too much. I had just spent the last 45 minutes training myself to actually under control the aircraft. And now I'm like, all right, let me just keep pushing the stick forward until this thing moves. So you can kind of see how that might be weird for somebody new, but on a flat surface, I'm sure this would be an amazing experience where it's just feather light. Um, I was not afraid to get a little handsy with the stick once I figured out that, yeah, I just need to get out of this little divot that I'm resting in. Um, and that really made a big difference. And once I kind of got it going, I was really kind of excited to start doing sideways hovering and um, you know, taxiing from place to place. So uh, all in all, I have to say, my experience with the Sakari was awesome and I, would love to spend a couple more hours getting the hang of it so I could cruise this thing around the airport. Really cool stuff. Really cool. Still on? Okay. So Josh did pretty well. He, I gave him a very, very accelerated course on this uh, aircraft, uh, which he took to it like a, like a fish to water. So I'm really pleased. So what we're going to do now, we're going to cool the aircraft off, shut her down, and then we're going to go fly the real thing, and we'll talk about it some more. Be back in a minute so you can get Josh's comments. Wow, that was significantly harder than I thought it would be. Yeah. But I have to say, it is really interesting to see how all of the systems interact with each other. And as a drone pilot, when you're kind of on the other end of this really beautifully com computer-controlled flight system, you fail to understand the nuances of how things interact. It was different, Ron. It was very different, but you did extremely well. Like I said earlier in, in one of the earlier clips, I gave you an, a very accelerated course. Normally what you did today is gonna be an hour or two before we get to that kind of that kind of flying, depending on age, ability, all sorts of different factors that come into play. You know, we we move the we move the training based on how you progress. So you did really, really well today. I'm anxious for us to go fly in the real thing and uh, see how you do there. Let's go fly something new. Let's go fly something new. Do it. So after spending about an hour with the Sakari, Ron took me up in the Schweitzer 300C. This is uh, just an awesome aircraft. And I, I have to say, it was more fun than flying the Sakari by far because it was just a little heavier on the stick and you could get a sense of really what it was doing just a little bit easier. And the thing that I think I'm realizing I like most about helicopters is the sight picture is amazing. You don't have to worry about like kind of being in a tail dragger and doing sideways taxis. You don't even have to worry about taxiing. You just pick up and go. Um, it was a ton of fun and then kind of coming back in for this landing where the Sakari sitting on the ramp and I had just gotten done flying the Schweitzer uh, out in the desert was just an amazing way to end the day and really made for a memorable experience. All right, so we just wrapped up here in the Schweitzer 300, and uh, it's a gorgeous aircraft. We took the doors off. It's a beautiful day for flying. Definitely. And Ron, how'd we do? We did fantastic. So, based on our training with the flight trainer, the Sakari trainer, we went out, got got uh, Josh on the flight controls, did really well with that. Then we went into our hover area out in the practice area, and within a couple couple of minutes, I had him hovering. The normal brand new pilot uh, that we've had out there that we're only have a couple of hours on the pendulum process the swinging of the aircraft 
around, we didn't have any of that because of the, the kind of the training we did on the Sakari. Um, that penduluming problem and the feeling of control was already there. So I'm really pleased uh, with Josh's performance. He did really well. The only, if we were continuing on with flight training, the only the next phases we'd be moving on would be just positions, body positions in the aircraft, uh, locking down uh, the movement of the helicopter, and then more precision with the hovering. So, you know what, I have to say it's been a great day, lots of helicopters, and I, as much as I'm loath to admit it, I think us drone folks can learn a lot from <laughs> our full-scale brethren. So thank you to Ron and Canyon State Aero, it's been a great day, yep. and if you're looking for some helicopter flight training, might I recommend these guys, they know what they're doing. Cool. All right. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for coming and watching with us today. So can a drone pilot fly a real helicopter? I think the jury's still out. For me, I know that it humbled the hell out of me. Those two aircraft put me through the paces. I was sweating bullets by the time we were done, and I don't know if you can tell, but I look ragged. It was an amazing opportunity to get to play with these things and get a shot at flying something real. I want to take this opportunity to thank Canyon State and Ron for the awesome, awesome help in learning how to do this. And when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter what it does. If it flies, I love it. As always, if you have comments, feedback, or questions, feel free to put them below. And as always, fly safe. Thanks.